everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Countdown. Last time I did a literary countdown, I did the fairly broad topic of great American novels. This time, I'm still going to do novels, but they're going to come from all around the world and focus on a particular theme, war. Hence their name, a war novel takes place during an armed conflict and the protagonist is either a soldier or a relative of the soldier, most often their spouse. Now let's rank some of the most compelling full-length books about what the atrocities of war can do to someone. Perhaps one of the most tragic aspects of World War II was the Holocaust, or the systematic murder of millions of Jews in Nazi Germany. In fact, look out for a similar video to this in which I rank my favorite works of Holocaust fiction, which I've really gotten into lately ever since my family and I visited the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. while on vacation. This particular work by Jennifer Rosner tells the story of a Jewish mother named Rosa and her five-year-old daughter Shira as they hide in a farmer's barn after the Jews in their home country of Poland are rounded up. The title refers to a bird in a story Rosa tells Shira in the sign language they develop to avoid being found by the Nazis, which sings melodies which serve as the only sound Shira hears during that time. As I mentioned earlier, war novels are generally told either from the perspective of a soldier or a soldier's family member. In the case of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, it's the latter. No matter what you think of it today, Little Women showcased women as being much more powerful than they were generally considered during the American Civil War and are generally considered in times of war when men are the ones called upon to do the fighting. Simply put, the novel chronicles the coming of age of the March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, while their father is away fighting in the Union Army in the American Civil War, and how bo both their father's absence and the political and social implications of the war affect their home lives. I will admit, though, Little Women would probably have ranked higher on the list had the war been more of a central theme in the novel. Here's yet another novel I included in my Top 10 American Novels video, but I promise not all of them are from that video, or even American Novels. Slaughterhouse-Five is all about time traveler Billy Pilgrim's experiences fighting in World War II, particularly his capture by the German army and the PTSD he suffers during the post-war years. In addition to themes of war, the novel also touches on Christian ideologies, Tralfamadorian philosophy, and postmodernism. As I mentioned in my video, Top 10 American Novels of All Time, we read Ernest Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms in my college class, World War I in Text and Film. But since I already talked about that novel, I decided to include For Whom the Bell Tolls in this video. Whereas A Farewell to Arms takes place during World War I, For Whom the Bell Tolls takes place during the Spanish Civil War, for which Hemingway was a reporter. The title is a reference to the epigraph, which is a reflection by John Donne on the practice of funeral tolling. The novel tells the story of American volunteer Robert Jordan, who is fighting against the fascist forces in Spain and witnesses many atrocities up until an ending in which the reader can decide for themselves whether Jordan launches a successful ambush, goes unconscious, or meets his death. As I've previously mentioned, 
I took a class my freshman year of college all about World War I novels and films. The first novel we had to read and write a reaction paper for in that class was Eric Maria Remarks, All Quiet on the Western Front. This anti-war novel tells the story of German World War I soldiers Paul Bomber and his comrades Friedrich Mueller and Albert Kropp, among others. After being pressured by a high school teacher to volunteer for the Imperial German Army, Bomber and his fellow soldiers suffer great physical and mental distress as the result of the atrocities of the war, and those who survive are greatly, irreversibly detached from civilian life upon their return home. All Quiet on the Western Front was adapted into a film in 1930, which was directed by Lewis Milestone, and another version of the film was made in 1979 by Delbert Mann. This one was an honorable mention in my video about American novels, but this time it's getting a spot where I get to talk about it a little more. Considered one of the most significant novels of the 20th century, Catch-22's significance in American history is that it showcases the nation's role in World War II, during which the story is set. Specifically, Catch-22 tells the story of Captain John Yossarian throughout his time serving on the fictional 256th U.S. Army Air Squadron stationed in the Mediterranean island of Pianosa. Yossarian and his fellow soldiers struggle to maintain their sanity while fulfilling their service requirement so that they may return home, which is a very clear commentary on the absurdity of war and military life. Okay, time to give some long overdue attention to a novel that isn't by a white author. In Colette Hassini's debut novel, a young boy named Amir grows up in Afghanistan amid, amidst atrocities such as the Soviet invasion, the Afghan refugee crisis, and the rise of the Taliban regime. But even with the horrors Amir and his family witness, the family remains unified with strength and resiliency, particularly Amir and his father. Another significant arc of this story is one of redemption, in which Amir seeks to make amends with a former friend whom he failed to save from a sexual assault by rescuing the friend's son two decades later. Like many Russian authors, Leo Tolstoy tends to write long, complex novels, and War and Peace is no exception. You should probably have seen this entry coming, given that the countdown is about war novels, and this novel has war in the title. War and Peace chronicles how five aristocratic Russian families are impacted by the Napoleonic Wars and the French invasion of Russia and the lengthy story is divided into four books or sections. To make the depictions of the war more authentic, Tolstoy consulted first-person accounts of the war, including history books, journals, letters, and autobiographies. As you should know by now, I'm an aficionado of musicals, and the musical Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812 is based on Part 8 of War and Peace, which chronicles Natasha's affair with Anatole and Pierre's search for his purpose in life. Speaking of musicals, make sure to check out my videos on my top 5 favorite musicals and my top 10 Broadway show tunes.
Clancy's first novel, The Hunt for Red October, really swept the nation, and the world for that matter, when it was fittingly published on October 1st, 1984. Red October is the name given to the ballistic missile submarine with which Cold War Soviet submarine captain Marco Ramius seemingly goes rogue. What, make, what really makes The Hunt for Red October stand out as a war novel is Clancy's use of technical descriptions of weaponry, submarines, espionage, and military tactics. Clancy's ultimate ne- message in this novel is that while the United States is a terribly flawed nation, it also has the potential to serve as a force for good and hope in the world. There, this more than sums up my view of my country in wake of recent events, which I won't delve too much into. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that if there are any novels on this list you haven't read, that hearing a little bit more about them has piqued your interest. Do you have a favorite? If so, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked hearing me rank these novels, subscribe to my channel to get more. Tap the bell icon so you get the alert once they're uploaded. And follow my literary analysis playlist so you know when that is specifically updated. Hope to see you next time.